With the advanced effects editor in the Light Shark, advanced multi-step and multi-parameter effects can be built and modified to your exact needs. To get into the advanced editor, let's go down to effects, select some lights. Here I'm selecting a group that I created a 2D layout for. I'll press find here so we can see the lights. And then I want to go into the effects editor. The effects editor is blank to begin. Start by pressing add layer. Now the advanced effects are all based off of your presets. And while when you patch presets for gobos and colors will be generated, you'll definitely want to generate presets for things like pan tilt positions, intensity, and any other parameters that you'd like to use in these advanced effects. Let's start with a basic color effect. We can press the plus sign right here, go to color, and then we'll choose our first color. Now let's choose a second color. I'm going to choose something that's very different so it's easy to see. And then I'm going to go ahead and choose a third color. Awesome. Now we've got an effect running with these three colors. Let's walk through customizing your effect. There are a lot of controls in here to customize your effect. First, click on the group here at the top. This will allow you to change your options for how the effect runs across the light. First, we have our effects attributes, size, speed, phase, offset, and width. These are the same as in the basic effects. Size controls how far the effect modifies the given parameters from where their base is. So in this case, if I drag it down, we get much less color saturation out of the effect. All the way up to full, and we see the full level recorded within each palette. Next we have speed. Speed can be modified up and down and defaults to 30 BPM. However, if we press here, we can set an exact BPM, we can tap tempo, and we can also change the speed to seconds as the total time that it takes to run the effect. Phase is how far apart the different runnings of the effect are going. So if the effect is running multiple times across the lights, where does it repeat? 180 means it's exactly every other fixture. And as we drag that up, fixtures become more offset. If we drag it to zero, all the fixtures work together. Sometimes you may have to press sync here. And if we go to 360, we'll see the same thing. I'll leave this in 180 for this example. Offset sets the offset of the entire effect. As you can see, when I move this, the graph above moves as well. And width is the distance between groups of fixtures that are running the effect. Drag the width down, and the effect comes closer together and the fixtures overlap more. Crank it all the way up, and the fixtures have a small gap between them when they're running the effect. Next, we have loop, repeat, and split. Loop is a great control. By default, it's set to zero, which means that this effect will continue running forever. But if I set it to one, the effect runs once and then stops. Set it to two, the effect runs twice and then stops, etc. If you're in loop mode and you do need to see it again, just hit sync and the effect will start over. Next we have repeat. Repeat and split work together but are a little bit different. Repeat is how often the effect repeats itself across the lights. If I leave it set to one, then the total amount of lights will run the effect. If I set it to two, now it'll split the lights in half in two groups over all of lights. So in this case, I have 12 lights. It's going to repeat every six. Three will split into three groups. And then within those groups, split groups, fixtures together. So two fixtures are grouped together. As you can see, it's happening in twos. Now it happens in threes. And threes works really well for this specific rig because I have sets of three lights. Now we have our selection and direction. 
this is really powerful as well. If I turn off my group, my repeat and split options, I can then look at my selection mode. By default, it's set to grid. This is the 2D layout that you set within the group. Let me show you the 2D layout that I have here. I'll press edit and press that layout. And we see I've mimicked the layout of the fixtures here in the 2D layout plan. I've also set them up as step one, two, three, and four, which I'll demonstrate now. Back in the effects editor, I can then set this instead of grid to steps. Now it happens across the four steps that I've set up, which happen to be the left to right rows on each truss. We also have the ability to use a selection mode of groups. Groups work when you have multiple groups selected. Let me show you an example. With the group mode, we simply select two groups. I'll find them here so we can see them. Head into the effects editor. And then what we'll do after we add in some colors is we'll go ahead and set the group selection mode here in this last column. When I do that, it does it by group. In this case, the overhead fixtures and the fixtures on the side lane. We can still change the direction within the group mode. Now let's look at the individual effects layers. So far in this tutorial, I've only shown you one layer. Within each layer, we have control over the whole layer's size. So we're able to control that size by individual layer, as well as for the whole effect here. And then we also have an offset to push it off in time. Then, for each parameter, we have a variety of controls as well. There's a start point, which is the start point on the timeline from left to right. And then there's a start and end limit. The start and end limit determine the percentage where the light's going to start. So if you only want it to get so saturated or be able to go so high, you can set these limits and the effect becomes much tighter. The effect is still going to the red preset, but it keeps a much tighter rein on the overall saturation based on the limits that I just set. Next, we have the curve type. By default, the effect follows a linear path. However, you may often want to do a snap or any variety of curves. Within each curve type, there are curve parameters. For the basic linear curve, there's just an in and out time. And so this is percentage based on the amount of time in total that the effect step has. And it bottoms out or tops out basically when you've moved this. So it allows you in this example to be stuck in the blue for longer, then be stuck in the red for longer, and the transition is much shorter. Work with these to get the effect you desire. For some of the more advanced curves, you'll see even more parameters, like this one. It has a curved shape to it, and there's a strength control, which allows you to adjust the sharpness of the curve. On the bottom two, we have the jump and the stair step, and you're able to customize the amount of jumps or stair step and the strength for the jump curve. In this way, you can make it look exactly how you want and get the effect that you're going for on your stage. We can also modify the amount of time that each step of the effect takes. We're able to drag here to make the effect steps take different amounts of time. And we can add more steps if desired. Let's talk about adding effect layers. Press add layer to add a new effect layer. Press plus. And now we can work with another parameter. So in this case, we don't have a lot of palettes built. So let's just go ahead and start with a new effect with only one type of light. Back to my MMXs. I'm going to add in a new color effect. Set it up to be in step mode. Let's 
set my parameters the way I like. Now I've created a new effect and I want to work with a second layer. So I'll press add layer. And now we'll go ahead and find some other presets. In this case, we'll do a gobo change. By default, the two presets will all line up, but we can modify those as desired so that they're offset for a different appearance. Now, as we add more layers, a couple things are going to happen. First, if the effects already started and we've added a new layer, we need to press sync to see how it will look when the effect starts at the same time. This is also applicable when you modify the different parameters within the effect. Pressing sync will bring you back in sync with each other. Then we can go ahead and use the blind symbol to hide any layers as desired so we can fine tune the other layers as we're working. As you can see, you have group based control over all of the effects attributes for each layer as well. Let's look at one more example. This time, I'm going to grab the lights on the back pipe, find them, and go into my effects editor. We're going to start with a position. And then we're going to add a second layer that has a color effect. By default, as you can see, once we press sync, these effects are perfectly in sync. These two layers, because they line up on the timeline, switch at the same time. When we go from one preset of position to the other, we also change from one color to the other. But we can modify this to be whatever we'd like. That's the beauty of this effect. So say we go ahead and this time we go ahead and set our repeat to two and our split to two. And now we have a different layout for the color. Now it's every other fixture still in sync, but not in the same way as before. I also like to modify the shapes on pan tilt presets. I think that's where you can really see this, this shine. So here, for example, the backlight shape, is going to have a nice fade to it, but the psych shape snaps right in, all perfectly in time with each other. Or maybe we add a third color and get a third change. We could split them evenly across the range, or as we had before, we can line up the red with the first preset, psych, and with the backlight position preset, we've lined up blue and orange. Press sync, and we see this magic happen. These effects can be recorded to a regular queue or to an effects preset, which we'll go over in our next video.